The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. He's my supplier. He's my supplier. He's my supplier. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. He's my supplier. Oh, 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 he's my supplier. He's my supplier. The Lord is all I see. living inside of me he's my supply oh, oh he's my supplier the lord is all i want the lord is all i need He's my supplier. He's my supplier. The Lord is all I see. Living inside of me. He's my supplier. He's my supplier. Oh, 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 he's my supplier. He's my supplier. Saints in Luke chapter 6, let's go here, uh, 16. Let's go here for uh, verse 10. It says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Let's go to verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous man, unrighteous money, who will commit to your trust the true riches? The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. Oh, oh, oh. he's my supplier. Oh, 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 he's my supplier. The Lord is all I see. He's living inside of me. He's my supplier. He's my supplier. Saints, if we look at this text right here, look what it's talking about. It says that uh, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Let's go to verse 11 again. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now, this is King Jesus talking. King Jesus talking about money here. And he said that if, if, if you're faithful in that which is least, if you're faithful in small money, you're going to be faithful in plenty of money. 
But if you're unjust, unjust in small money, you're going to be unjust also in big money. Now, in this text, we're seeing that the Lord is talking about having no excuses no matter where you are in life. You must become a sower. You must, you must become a steward of finances. It don't matter where you are in life. There's no excuse of why you don't honor God. The Lord is saying right here that he studies how you handle small beginnings. He watches how you handle small money. I mean, you're not no millionaire. You're not no hundred thousand there. You, you're not no 50,000 there. You're not no 20,000 there. You're not no uh, 13,000 there. He looking at how you handling small money. He's studying you. And he said that he that is faithful in that which is small will be faithful also in much. Because you have to be trained while you're at small money. You have to be trained to sow at small money. You can't wait to get to big money. Because when you get to big money and you're already not a sower, you're actually going to have more of a weakness and a struggle and a wickedness overriding you to devour that money apart from the Holy Spirit. So saints, if you look at what Jesus is pinpointing here, he's saying that when you have tiny money, that's the perfect spot to train, to be trained how to sow. If you wait to get to big money, it's not going to work. Because remember, the thief's spirit is not cut off. So when you get to that bigger money, guess what? It's waiting to swallow that bigger money because it already has place, it already has dominion. The Lord trains you how to sow at small money, not at big money. You know, growing up, I used to see people all the time, like they'll say, when the Lord give me more money, I'll sow. But imagine, the statement in itself is so wicked and crooked because the Lord already gave you money. You say the Lord, I know you gave me. Uh, when you give me some more, then I'll sow. But what happened to all the money that God give you? Uh, growing up, I used to hear people say that all the time. When I, when God give me some more, then I'll start sowing. And you like, how old are you? Uh so you lived on this earth for 50,000 years. You about 51,000 years old. <laughs> and for 51,000 years, God been giving you money. And you, you got the nerve to tell God when you, when, when you give me some more. And saints, you, you see, the thief in spirit is so conniving. Because it don't even make sense no more. But it's bold. God trains you to sow money when you have small money. Because when you start making bigger money, it's harder. Jesus said something powerful. He said that it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It's hard for a rich man to enter to the kingdom of God. Where's the kingdom of God? It is his rules of sowing and reaping. It's hard for a man that has a lot to enter into seed time and harvest because he has went so long without honoring God sowing. His sowing muscles are not trained. His sowing mindset is not empowered. He doesn't have a correct perspective, mentality, viewpoint on sowing. It's hard for him to enter into sowing because he has went so long without sowing and now he's even at a bigger level of money. So that money is more enticing for him. Now, you know why the Bible says hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, watch this here. 
it, you know it's not talking about someone that God made rich. Because it said that for him to enter into the kingdom of God. No, if God made him rich, he would already be in the kingdom of God. Abram was made rich, but in the kingdom of God. Solomon made rich, but in the kingdom of God. So the text is obvious. It said it's hard for a rich man to enter. He's entering now. Not before. So before he ever becomes rich, he's not operating in the kingdom. He's operating in Satan's will, Satan's plans, Satan's decisions. He's entering in, which means that he is now becoming a participant. It's saying that it's hard for a rich man to participate in sowing and reaping the kingdom of God. Because that's not how he became rich. He became rich off of greed. You know, greedy people are not seedy people. Because greedy people, no matter what God supplies to them, they will eat it for themselves. See, greed makes you selfish and seed makes you unselfish. If you take a note, write that down. For you to sow seed, you have to die to self. Because you have to take the spotlight off of yourself and pit it on someone else. It is a curse to live for yourself. It's a curse. When you live your life all about your bills, how I'm going to pay this, how I'm going to fix this, how I'm going to make this happen, you're cursed. You shall? Let me show you in the word of God. Adam didn't come to the earth Concerned about himself. He came to the earth concerned about the garden. Read the Bible. When he came to the earth, it was not about him. He didn't say, I need to find a wife. The Lord said, I need to give you a wife. Because it wasn't about him. He didn't say, oh, I need some sex. I'm a man. The Lord said, it's not good for you to be alone. See, the Lord is the one making the spotlight on Adam. Because Adam does not got the spotlight on himself. Adam got the spotlight on the garden. Adam got the spotlight on the kingdom system. Adam got the spotlight on sowing the seed. Let's go there real quick before, before I finish this off. Uh, Luke 16. Look at his mindset. As a matter of fact, let me read through this other Bible. I got so much Bibles. I love Bibles, boy. These Bibles, this is how you unlock your life. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 1. And let's go to uh, verse 28. It says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God said, I bless you. I give you dominion. Now, let's look at what the first thing God does as an instrument of the blessing. If you take a note, write this down. The seed is an instrument of the blessing. Look at this. It says, and God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed. which is upon the face of all the earth. Look at this. And every tree in that which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for your meat. Look what God did to Adam. Now there's no sin, there's no iniquity. God tells Adam, I'm gonna give you this seed and everything that you are supposed to have and experience throughout the totality of your existence, I'm placing it in the sowing of this seed. Y'all not talking to me in here. The seed is the instrument of the blessing. This is how you play songs of victory and songs of harvest and songs of multiplication. The seed is the instrument of the blessing. The Lord blesses him and then the Lord didn't even give him 
a prayer regimen. You know what the Lord gave him? A seed. And God tells him, everything that you want, Adam, is going to be unlocked in your seed. We got people today want God to do major stuff for them and don't got no seed in their hand. And if you start sowing, you stop sowing. Who bewitch you? Saints, I see for somebody looking, you know, for somebody that right now like me that lived my whole life by sowing and reaping, I'll never understand you. I won't. I'll never understand you. It don't matter if you try to explain yourself to me. You tell me how much hard times you'd have had. See, that's why that's why the Holy Ghost let me walk through a path of homelessness. So I wouldn't be convinced by nobody. Because homelessness is actually the lowest you could go. How you live your life letting Satan win over you when God gave you a seed principle? That the seed multiplies, becomes bigger, upgrades, and comes back to you in a harvest where your life has more than what you started off with when you sold. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 real quick, since we over here. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, it says, while the earth remaineth, there'll be seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Saints, it's hot outside. It's hot. Saints, go outside today. It's hot, man. It's hot. Where you live is hot. That's a fulfillment of Genesis 8.22. Look at how hot it is today. It's a fulfillment of Genesis 8.22. Now, now watch this here. This your evidence. Because in the same place where it said that as long as the earth remains, you're going to see hotness. You're going to see the heat. It says cold and heat. It's heat today. Watch this here. It says seed time and harvest. <sighs> so seed time and harvest is confirmed just like the heat in your city today. The same way for a surety without any guessing, without any suspicion. Nobody got to convince you that it's hot today. Nobody can convince you that it's not Cold today is hot. And, and we're doing this broadcast on uh, July, July the 7th, Thursday, 2022. Nobody got to convince you that it's hot during this time. Now watch this. The same way nobody got to convince you that it's hot, the same way nobody got to convince you that the seed always becomes a harvest of something that you desire. God on purpose talked about the seed in the same place that he talked about the weather because he knew that in these end times, you will see the weather that it was obvious because saints, let me prophesy this. This is going to be one of the coldest winters that you ever seen in the history of mankind. This winter, they're going to be so cold this fall and when more so the winter, but the fall, you're going to see that the temperature is going to drop dramatically. Freezing weather, because saints, what God is proving something to you, that the same way that the weather is confirming the word. The seed is established. As the way of the Lord for you to enter into his abundance, his plan for your life, his results for your life. Watch this here. Now, saints, hereby you understand that people that don't walk in sowing are deceived. They're deceived. They're tricked because the enemy is able to ride over your head when you're not sowing because this is the weapon that God gave to you to move the blessing.
It is God's will for you to be extremely rich. It's God's will for you to have prosperity upon prosperity. It's God's will for you to have more than enough. So if you don't got it, Satan going to be able to manipulate your life the way that Satan wanted it to be. Satan going to be able to stop you from accomplishing stuff that you were supposed to accomplish over the course of your life. So where you are today is not your finale. If you're sowing. Now watch this here. What's going to happen to you when the harvest comes? The harvest is always bigger than what you sow. The harvest does not have a shortage or a smaller appearance than what you gave to God. The harvest does not come back to you in disappointment. You don't look at a harvest and say, man, I sold for this. This all I'm going to get. No, 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 no. The harvest is God impressing you. Because you impressed him. Now, saints, I want you to catch something about sowing. Sowing is, uh, is a stage to perform for the Lord. Sowing is a stage to perform for the Lord. And watch this here. When someone is operating in sowing, they're actually in a place where they could show the Lord, this is how interested I am in you. This is how much. See, the spirit of God, when he was having Adam so, Adam was fascinated with the Lord. He adored the Lord. That's what he wanted. So, so saints, I want you to catch this. Adam was looking at that tree of the knowledge of good and evil every day, and he wasn't studying it because he was focused on sowing. That was his whole admiration. He wanted to be like the father. And he wanted the father to have his way via his sowing hands. Adam had offered up his life to sowing. He offered up his soul to sowing. That's all he wanted to do day and night. He was always thinking about his seed. He had a tree right there that offered him lust. He had a tree right there that offered him iniquity. He had a tree right there that offered him wickedness and he paid no attention to it. You know why? Because he was only focused on sowing. Think about it. Adam did not give his time, effort, or body over to that tree because he had given over himself to sowing. That's what he did. Adam had made up in his mind, this is my purpose in this life, to sow into God, not to focus on me. You're not going to make it to your destiny focusing on you. You're not going to make it to your destiny focus on you. What God has for you requires you to take your eyes off of you. As long as you keep on looking at you, you're going to be stuck. And that's a curse. Curse people focus on themselves all throughout their life. You focus on your bills, your responsibilities, your transportation, your housing. All of that is all about you. That's why nothing happened. That's why nothing happened. Because even God Almighty laid down his life on a cross. And showed you how to get what you desire. He desired man to call upon his name. So he came down and laid down his life. So that man could call upon his name. He got the harvest of souls. By laying down his soul. Jesus was the perfect example. That for you to get what you desire. You have to leave. Your desire. For you to get what you desire, you have to leave your desires. 
For you to get what you want, you have to leave your wants. For you to live in what you dream about, you got to leave your dreams. See how God set up his system is, you got to leave out of what you want to accomplish for you to actually accomplish it. So even though Adam in his inner man, he really wants a wife, he never voices it, he never pursues it, he souls. God brings a wife to him. For you brothers that get a woman before you finish sowing, good luck. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> good luck to you. Because women are crazy. And if the anointing don't restrain her, you're going to have problems on your hands. Good luck for you, brother. I don't know what's going to happen to you. You better hide the knives while you're sleeping. You better wear shoes on your feet because you might wake up with two toes. Good luck for you, brother. I don't know what's going to happen for you. I feel bad for you, brothers, that up there you ain't finished your sewing assignment and you dooks in a woman. Be careful, brother. Because I'm going to tell you, women are crazy without the anointing restraining them. You're going to need some anointing. Women are crazy. She might pet makeup on her face, but she needs God's grace. She might have a nice little booty. Adam was sewing, and God brought the woman. Imagine you're not sewing and you got a woman. You, 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 better be, you better be nervous. You better be nervous. Oh, boy, 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 you better be nervous. If you, if you, if you a man and you got a woman and you're not constantly sewing, so you, you crazy. Not even her, you crazy. You crazy to take that risk. To think that no demon, no serpent gonna Overtake that woman. Whew. Somebody told you wrong, player. You better get it together real fast. Because I'm going to tell you like this. Not only women are crazy, they're sneaky. Women are sneaky. And you're going to need a prophetic anointing to see your woman. You ask a woman a question, a woman is a liar. You're going to need a prophetic anointing to see your woman. You're like, prophet, you creating doubt in here. No, I'm creating truth. Woman got a level of the serpent that was given to them in their flesh nature. Where they'll lie to you, they'll trick you, and they'll scheme you. Some of you all don't want to agree with it. But I'm going to tell you right now. If you don't get it together. Every woman in her flesh is a snake. She a liar. She a trickster. She a deceiver. You better get that together, man. They act like us men was the one that sneak. Shh. Women are the most sneakiest creatures on the earth. And you know why they so sneaky? Because they easily can win the credibility of someone. If a woman kills her husband today, you know what she going to do on the trial? She going to say that he was beating her. He, he about to kill her. And she had to self-defense. And the jury going to consider it. They going to look at the evidence and see. And she going to cry. Saints, how many of y'all watch that Johnny Depp case? Y'all saw that case with Johnny Depp? That woman beat the crap out of Johnny Depp. And then she told the world that Johnny Depp was, was, was doing all type of stuff. And Johnny Depp lost all type of endorsements. And when they went to trial, everything came out. And saying she, the, the woman was wilding. The woman was taking selfies. Because she thought that she had the jury underneath her finger. 
You know why? Because she's a woman. I don't know what to tell you. If you got a woman and you're a man and you're not sewing, you might be in jeopardy. I don't know what to tell you. Saints, this woman beat the crap out of Johnny Depp. He a famous actor. She beat the crap out of him. And then she told the lie upon lie upon lie. And she thought she had the jury underneath her finger. She thought that everybody was going to believe her because she's a woman and he's a man. Here's what I'm telling you. I, I, I just want to talk to the men on here for a minute. If you dooks in a woman at night and you don't honor God, you are in serious trouble. Because number one, that woman that you're dooks in, you don't really know who you're dooks in. You need the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Sex is not a prophetic anointing to know who a woman is. You know a woman based upon quality time and work in God's system. You honor God and he'll honor you and tell you the information you need. Saints, it don't matter who I deal with. I don't let them tell me the facts. I don't, I don't let nobody tell me facts because nobody will tell you facts. You flow in the spirit to find out facts on people because dear son, the woman that you're talking to from a distance is not the same person when you get up close. And if you knew what a woman does in 24 hours, you'll be shocked. If you knew how a woman spends her quiet time, your opinion would change. If you knew how much times a, your woman took a shower, you would change. If you, if you, if, 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 if you understood how much your woman believe in cleaning her feet. <laughs> huh? <laughs> if you knew how, how much she cleaned her feet. If you knew how she cleaned her behind and her face with the same rag. Your whole, you, you, you would not be kissing her if you knew something. <laughs> if you knew how she cleaned her behind and her face <laughs> with the same rag, you'll think twice about them kiss. If you knew that she rubbed her lips. I got to go. I got to, I got to keep on teaching. I got to keep on teaching. Women are not what they present to you. Every woman has their own demons. You only see the beauty of a woman. You see her hips. You see her behind. You see her chest. Ooh, look at her. Look at her. She just, ooh, just sizzling, boy. Ooh. And you have thoughts. What if she bend over? What if I bend over? You just think stuff in your mind. You can't help it. <laughs> but then when you get to the insight of that woman you find out what she does in her personal time you find out all the people that she talked to on her phone you talk that you find out that you you the 15th brother that she talks with you find out different stuff <laughs> There's things you're going to have to know as a man. Sowing is what brought Adam's wife to him. Not his desire for sex. If you take a note, write that down. <whistles> Dear son, who is a woman when she's at her workplace? Did you know that work husbands exist? I'm not saying this to make y'all suspicious. I'm just telling you the truth, man. This, this is real life. 
Did you know that work husbands exist? Some of y'all right now, you got a husband at work. You got a man that when you go there, that's your boy, that's your buddy. Y'all, y'all marry to each other, y'all help each other, y'all laugh with each other, you joke with each other. But when you get home, dear son, forget these ladies on here, forget these ladies on here. Forget these ladies on here. <laughs> Forget these ladies on here. Don't worry about it. Let's act like they're not up in here because these niggas, them niggas over there won't stop us. Let me talk to you men on here. Let me tell you something, brother. No woman is easily discerned. No woman. It don't matter if she got a Bible in her hand. It don't matter if she's singing a choir. It don't matter if she's churching. Women that talk in tongues are one of the most sneakiest level of women on earth. That's why they talk in tongues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ricka T, Licka T, we don't know who else she licking. And we don't know if his name start with a T. Listen to me, brothers. Women are not what they show you. Remember, a woman is an advertiser. She's a businesswoman. She knows what to show you. She knows what to entice you and make you feel accept, ex, be in acceptance of her. She knows. She knows how to entice you and seduce you and make you like her. Every woman is like that. Every woman knows how to be seductive and make you enjoy the presentation of her. But who is she when she's alone? Who does she talk to when she's hurt? These are things you need to ask a woman. But not only ask a woman, but you need to seek the father on that. Because women are liars. Women don't tell you the truth. How many times a woman is sleeping? You hear that bitch snoring. You say you're sleeping. No, I'm, I'm not sleeping. I'm just resting my eyes. Baby, you would just sleep. You, you, you snored. There's, there's, there's saliva on the couch. And she will pop up after. I went to sleep. I was just resting my eyes. I, I went to sleep. That's woman. Dear son, if you ever get with a woman, she going to fall asleep on you and tell you she wasn't asleep. Since I don't want to get too raw in here, but let me just tell you something. If you talk a long time with a woman on the phone, the only thing that's going to keep her awake during the night hours is if... Now, I'm not encouraging you to have this. But the only way that she going to stay up is if y'all doing this phone sex thing. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I just... I'm, I, listen, I don't do that. I haven't done that. There's nobody that got records of me doing that. Don't worry, Okay. There's nobody in my, I don't, I don't have phone sex. I don't do that. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you that she going to fall asleep. She going to fall asleep on you and she going to be on the phone and sleeping. Women only present to you what they want you to know. You don't know everything about a woman. You don't know everything about a woman. <laughs> I, I, I'm just telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. Y'all, y'all want act. Some of y'all got 14 children out here. You want act like you don't know nothing. Now, remember, remember, saints, remember, saints, sex talk is still of God. God created sex. People try to act like it's inappropriate. What's inappropriate about what God created? What's inappropriate if you using it and you ain't got license to use it? The only thing inappropriate about sex or sex talk is when you want to engage in it and you don't got authorization to. But you need to know this. Women are not honest. They're not honest with themselves. They're not honest with themselves, nor would they be honest with you. 
A woman will lie to herself. A woman will sit all her life say, I'm a Christian. Meanwhile, she know that she dukes and she got a man come to her house every day. He of the world. She got cheered, she do, but she'll tell you, I'm a Christian. I love God. That's woman. Saints, woman will lie to you about their sexual health. Woman will have AIDS and won't even tell you she. They won't tell you nothing. Women are not honest. Women won't be transparent about stuff. Until you prophetically show them that you have evidence. You listening to me, son? Because the spirit of God talking to you. You know, that's not my subject, but there's there's several of you right now that's dating a woman that you want to invest all your life into her and she not being honest to you. Because she only presented to you what you want to see. There's several of you men on here. You was asking God whether you should commit fully over to this woman and you needed to know these stuff because now you're going to start observing different. You, the first thing you want to do, you, you want to know a woman, just, just be chilling with her, ask her, let me see, let me, let me see, I ain't even going to say, I ain't going to say everything, but start asking her for stuff, and you see how she withhold back, and you're like, what, what's wrong? And she turned Mexican real quick when you start asking her a question. You want to see a black woman turn to a Mexican? You won't see a white woman turn Spanish. Just it's still ask her. If you want to see a white woman turn into a Puerto Rican, just start asking her for. Yeah, yeah. Si, 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 senor, si, senor. Si, senor, I ain't saying no si, senor. I said, let me see your private C's. That's why I said that. Is, 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 yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I said, listen, you came from Congo. All right. You came from Congo. All right. I, I don't know no si, senor and all of that. All right. I just said, can I see it? You see how they change. Every woman got a secret life. You know that woman got secret life. You know that. Woman, because saints, remember the Bible talks about a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is rich. A virtuous woman is wealthy. Read your Bible. Go to Proverbs 31. She's wealthy. Now watch this here. Go to Queen of Sheba. She's wealthy. Okay, watch this here. Look at that woman with the alabaster box. She even, she even got a large sea well. She blessed. You meet a woman, she not rich, she not wealthy. You got to find out the demons that why she not wealthy. Listen to me, son. When you meet a woman and she not, she not an owner, she not got no houses and land, she ain't a rule over much. Find out why she's not. Find out why she's not. Is she on her way up to it? Or she not even on her way up to it. Find out why she's not. I'm telling you some deep stuff. And you ain't going to hear this from no marriage counselor. No male counselor. You go call a psychic and see if they're going to tell you. No, don't call no psychic. I'm just playing around. But just you ain't going to find none of this stuff. <laughs> You're not going to find none of this stuff through no secular outlet. This only spiritual talk. Find out why that woman does not own things. Find out why. Find out how she spent her time before she met you. Find out all the people that she knew and still knows today. Who do she call on the phone? Who do she text? You need to know this if you're going to spend your life with this person. Because women are liars. You're not going to know nothing if you operating with your natural eye. Dear son, 
This the father talking to you. If you're going to know who a woman is, you're not going to find it out with these. And you're not going to find it out with this. Because women have been okay with lying to themselves all their life. To the degree that they'll lie to you by default. Because they've been lying to themselves. Oh, I'm a woman of God. I love God. I fear God. And then you study how foolish they are. They don't have no wisdom. They don't even know how to protect themselves from a snake. They don't even know how to protect themselves from depression. And then they'll tell you, I'm a woman of God. Of God? But why see all this of the devil traits inside of your mind? Why are you depressed? Why are you sad? Why are you insecure? Why are you upset? Why are you angry? Why are you short-tempered? All this is not of God, but you talk, you say you a woman of God. That means that God handles your reactions. That means that God handles your time, your schedule. When you're alone with yourself, you give it over to the God that you say that you're of. If you got a chance to go to the carnival, you'll rather spend time with the God that you said that you of. Women don't know who they are. Women will spend hours on social media and struggle to read one chapter of the Bible. Women will spend time trying to find the best angle to take a picture, but won't find the angle of the spirit for their decisions. You got to know who a woman is by the spirit. You ain't going to know her by the flesh. Ask Samson. Don't worry, don't worry. That woman was sucking Samson, doing all type of tricks for Samson. Samson felt the greatest sexual pleasure you could feel according to his ideology. <laughs> but Samson still didn't know that woman. He didn't know that that woman was with the Philistines. He didn't know that that woman was with the Philistines. He didn't know that that woman was of the Philistines. He didn't know that that woman was in cahoots with the very people that he was trying to destroy. He didn't know that that woman was friends with the people that he was trying to destroy. He didn't know that that woman was friends. He didn't know that when she left his house, when he left her house, when he left the place where they was duxin, that she went and said, I, I still don't got no information yet. I got to do it one more time. I got to suck them right two more times. If I suck them real good about three more times, I'll find out. You don't want to talk to me in here, do you? Huh? You don't want to talk to me, huh? I know you don't. You don't want to talk to me, Cletus. She told him, I, 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 I got to suck them three more times. Let me do something more strange for him. I'll come back and uh, hopefully he'll tell me. To the degree she sucked him, did all type of stuff. And guess what? He still held the secret from us. So she had to go to the verbality. She said, don't you love me? Why are you not telling me? She frustrated. Because all the tactics didn't work. Solomon back shot, throat shot, <laughs> toe shot, <laughs> face shot. She said, why are you not telling me the secret? Why? And saints, Samson didn't even know when he told her the secret that she was a secret agent for them. Even when Samson told her the secret, he still didn't know. He thought he was telling the secret to his wife. The woman that was going to hold him down. Samson thought, this my babe. She. <laughs> Samson said, hey, this, this, this is the woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. She should know my secret. And that was his enemy. And you brothers on here that don't honor God and you think that you're going to have a good result with the woman you with. Good luck, brother. 
And even that luck that's good still ain't going to keep you. Good luck. I say that sarcastically because I don't believe in luck. When Samson shared that secret with his woman, his wife, he like, I could tell her because she ain't going to do me no harm. And as soon as he told her, she said, hey, hey, it's his hair. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They raided the place. While, while, while he sat there, they cut their hair off. In the presence of his wife, the woman that he loved. His, his go-to. Ah, ah. And some of you men on here, you think that you know your woman because y'all had two, three dates together? Because you, because you trucked her several times on the back seat? Because she sucked you? You think that you know who a woman is because she sucked your, because she sucked your pipe? Women are the most sneakiest creatures on earth. They're more sneaky than us men. They're more sneaky because a woman will cry wolf and then have her secret skeletons. Dear son, you better think twice in 2022 before you start making plans without the Holy Ghost giving you insight. About your woman. I advise you as a man. You should go on a three day fast. Don't eat or drink or nothing. Now as a matter of fact. You can't even find out nothing in three days. I advise you to go on a ten day fast. And tell me Lord. Tell me everything that I need to know about this woman. Tell me. Because she ain't going to tell me Lord. Tell me. Tell me who she is. Tell me who she with. Tell me what I need to know. Brother if you ain't going to do that. Just chill it out. Just chill it out. Then just, just go with the flow. Until the flow don't go no more. A woman ain't going to tell you the truth. A woman ain't going to be honest with you. You're going to need the seed. And the time. And the harvest. To be working for you. You're going to need to honor God enough. So that he can protect you. From what you can't see. And then, then, then you people that's dating at 20 and 30, you definitely don't know who woman is. Because woman will side swipe you like there's no tomorrow. You, if you, if you 20 and 30 something years old and you dealing with a woman, boy, extremely good luck for you. Because women are pimps. Women are pimps. Women are pimps and they look for simps. You know what a simp is? Simp, more so like somebody that could be tricked, that ain't got no consciousness, ain't got no awareness. Women are pimps, especially when they're 30, 20, even teens, they are pimps. I already warned you. And as this generation getting worse, we in a godless generation. When we grew up, we didn't have cell phones. We was, when I grew up, I was praying and fasting. I would go to my high school, dry fasted, not eating or drinking. Go throughout my whole day, dry fasted. Our generation today is a godless generation. So the young people are way more deeper as holes. They're way more trifling. They're way more conniving than ever before. So if you think if you if you think that you could trust God, you tell us I trust God, you know, God brought somebody to me. All right. God may have brought them to you, but find out why he brought them to you. Saints, I found that out in ministry. There's a purpose why God be bringing some of y'all to me. I got, I, 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 I found out that some of y'all come to me because you're really a witch. As a matter of fact, 100% of people that a man of God is sent to is a witch. 100%. They, 
That's why he sent to them, to set them free. All the children of Israel was witches. That's why they couldn't submit to Moses. But they had a chance to. They had a chance to. They had a chance to. But they chose not to because they said, we're going to remain witches. We're not with this submission stuff. We're not with this surrender all stuff. We got our opinion and their opinion was all in witchcraft. We got our thoughts and their thoughts was in witchcraft. Everybody that I'm sent to is a witch. Everybody. Everybody that I will be sent to two years from now is a witch. Everybody that I will be sent to six months from now is a witch. Everybody that I will be sent to tomorrow, today is a witch. That's why I'm sent to them. We come to seek and save the lost. So when you meet somebody, you know they are. And you know that they are. That's why you are able to train them and increase in your compassion and mentorship towards them because you know that they are. I wish I could tell every man of God that. I wish I could. I wish I could. I wish I could tell them that everybody that you meet is a witch. There's a man of God right now that I really want to prophesy to him and tell him that he about to, um, he about to uh, get a side swipe by a, a woman right now. You're going to hear about it. I wish I wish I could tell him. But truth be told, the Holy Ghost say well, he not, he not going to listen because he, he, he trusts. He trusts. He trusts. But Chris Brown then had a song said, these hoes ain't loyal. And, and that, that's, that's, I really, I really want to tell him that. I really want to tell him that, but he, he not going to listen because he trusts this person. But you're going to hear, you're going to hear about it. Watch. You're going to hear about it. It's going to go viral. Adam was sowing. And he had to get that seed first before God could give him a wife, before God could give him a family, before God could give him other things. Because there is a river that God allows to come to you. That is safe through sowing. If you're not sowing, you don't, you can't trust nothing that's coming to you. You can't trust nothing that appears to you. You can't take it as if it's from God because you need the seed to get to the harvest. So if you see a harvest, you should be suspect. How do I know that it's from God? I didn't even sow. I didn't even fulfill what the spirit of God wanted me to do in my personal walk with him. And saints, when sons show up and you just take it, that's scary. Because you didn't even take the time to celebrate God's presence. So how do you know that it's not a demonic presence? How do you know it's not a demonic presence governing? How do you know? Because you didn't even celebrate God's presence. And remember when his presence is present. That's where he talks to you and gives you secrets. Psalm 25 says the secret of the Lord is with those that fear him and he shows them his covenant. So if you don't have his presence being celebrated by you, how do you know anything? How do you know the truth about anybody? How could you trust situations when they show up to you? How do you know that you're not being deceived? Because you didn't even celebrate God's presence for him to talk to you. Listen to what I'm saying on here, people of God. When you live a life where you don't honor God, you have to disrespect him. You can't do both. You have to honor or disrespect. Honor or disrespect. And when someone is disrespected, they don't talk to you. Some of you all are like that, so you should know. Some of you are like that, so you should understand. When you feel disrespected, you get quiet. Right? When you feel like somebody is... How many times have you been in a place and somebody disrespected you and you say, I, I ain't saying nothing? 
Forget that. Since you don't want to listen, I ain't saying nothing. You have those traits inside of you that when you feel like someone is highly disrespecting you, you'll, you'll shut your mouth. You won't even say nothing. But how much more God? We hear about the silent years. It's true that God didn't speak for a long period of time. When Samuel came on the scene, the word of God said that the word of the Lord was rare. There was no visions. That mean that God wasn't talking to nobody. He was upset. He was disrespected. The Bible said God wasn't talking to nobody and Samuel came on the scene. That's why there was such a, a, a move of the spirit because now God had found someone. But what was Samuel doing? He was ministering to the Lord. He was being a minister towards the Lord. Think about that. Samuel was worshiping God and sowing seed. Remember, he was with the priest, Eli. And Eli was in that office of receiving seed from people. Samuel was sowing. Eli was his trainer. Eli trained him to sow. Samuel was four years old sowing. That's why my daughter, Zendaya, I see that. She always sewing. I teach her how to sew. I'm going to teach her how to sew even more. Because I'm not spoiling my child. I'm showing her how to unlock her destiny herself. Daddy already unlocked his harvests. By the time she get my age, she's going to have double the harvests I unlocked at this age. Because I had to come up from the gutter. I had to deal with some principalities that biological parents didn't deal with. I had to box some demon spirits that they was unwilling to fight. I came up from the gutter. She not coming up from no gutter. She going to have way more harvests. When she in her 20s, I'm in my 20s right now. When she in her 20s, she going to have way more money than me. Way more health than me. Way more results than me. You know why? Because I'm showing her how to sow her way out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah.